If you can't recognize the devil unless he's showing you his horns, then you in trouble. Yet the Pope, do it. A man, the Pope, would have us call him Holy Father. Why? 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 We'll get to that and much more. You're even gonna see the cardinals and popes sing to Lucifer by name at the Vatican during Easter. Get that and more in part one of the Catholic Church Exposed. Okay, let's start this by saying that I don't think that the normal person in the congregation of the Catholics is an evil weirdo or nothing. No, just the hierarchy. What's your name? I believe the Catholic Church is put here to put people stumble on bad doctrine so they follow the devil instead of the Lord. Let me explain. Do that. I will. On this journey, first, let's take a look at where we get good old Roman Catholicism from. The Romans, exactly. And they had always had a polytheistic type of religion system for over a millennia, meaning they had multiple gods. So, when they invented Catholicism, it was very easy and natural and comfortable for them to, you know, dress it up as a polytheistic mess. You don't believe me? For example, nowhere in scripture, anywhere, does it say to pray to anyone except to God himself. Praying to Mother Mary, out. Praying to the saints, out. This, this is what scripture says that Jesus himself says to pray like. These are Jesus' words. I didn't see him say anything about his mom or about the saints or disciples, did you? No, no. When Jesus was on the cross, he cried out to God. He didn't ask his mother or Peter or any other saint or anyone for help. No, he prayed to God. Okay, let's move on. As we started the show with... Yet, the Pope has us call him Holy Father, and he says that he has the keys to keep us out of heaven or to put us into hell. I'm very angry at that little jerk. Y yes, he says that he is Jesus incarnate and has the keys to heaven and hell. The Pope says he has the power to send us to heaven or hell, yet Jesus specifically says this. See, the only way, the only way is through Jesus. He didn't say, yup, through me, oh, oh, and, and the Pope, my vicar on earth. And, you know, let's take a look at a couple of these classy guys they call popes, Christ's vicar on earth, Jesus incarnate. No, God, please, no, no, no! <laughs> Just a couple. I don't want to make people too freaked out or sick, okay? Okay! Pope John the Twelfth. This guy was considered just to be like the worst pope. He was really young and they considered him the worst due to his philandering, the murdering that was going on around him. And you know, he'd give big lands and important titles to hookers and girls he was sleeping with. And then he ended up being murdered by a woman's husband who caught them in bed together. Seriously, what the fuck are you doing? Ah, uh, nice, right? But widely considered the most evil 
Pope of all time. So I don't know why they don't call this guy the worst. Like, I guess that, the other guy was the worst just because he was like the most incompetent. But the most evil, diabolical, was Pope Alexander the Sixth. I mean, this guy's infamy knew no bounds. I mean, this guy could make G.G. Allen blush. I just want a woman that fucking smells dirty, doesn't give a fuck, just wants the same thing I do. Get off and get out. He had, okay, to start with, he had tons of illegitimate kids, and he was often called the whore master of Rome. He was very wealthy, and he bribed his way into being the Pope. Many, many got murdered along the way, and while he was Pope, the, his family even had their own poison they liked to use. I mean, talk about a guy with yeah. problems. He's the main villain in the Assassin's Creed game, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. And he's a character on the show called The Borgias, because his last name was Borgia. Which actually followed pretty doggone close to real life and the history of his family of whoring, murder, bribery, deceit, even incest uh, with his own daughter, who he also married out and had her husband's murdered in, you know, time and again for political moves. Trash. All right, check this out. Even all those old Renaissance paintings and depictions of Jesus with like blue eyes and blonde hair, that is Cesare Borgia. Okay, that's the Pope's son Cesare. Him and Leonardo da Vinci were cornhole in each other. And you know the Pope had da Vinci paint all kinds of stuff. So yeah, he let him depict his son Cesare as Jesus and everything. Isn't that ridiculous? I'm not lying. Here, take a look. Take a look and you tell me for yourself. You know, up until like the 1500s, the Bible wasn't even translated from Latin so like the common man could read it. And then when the guy, when a guy finally stood up for the people and said, no, this isn't right, they tried executing him several times. And that's where Lutheranism originally came from. The Catholic Church did not want us to be able to read the Bible. Why? 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 So they could dictate false crap to us and lie to us about what it said. They literally used to tell people that you had to pay so much money, make a pilgrimage to Rome, and buy these uh, indulgences so that you would be able to go to heaven. They, they literally said that you had to pay. You know, you might think about taking Jesus Christ as your savior instead of fooling around with all this stuff. Did you know that more people have died in the name of God than any other reason ever in history because of the Catholic Church? What a shame. It's like, you know what the Catholic boarding schools did to the natives up until like almost the 1970s. Matter of fact, the, the Pope's in Canada right now on an apology tour to the na to the indigenous people there in Canada. Here, check this, check this out, check this out. ...where he is trying to right a wrong. The Pope greeted by the Prime Minister and leaders of the indigenous community, apologizing for the church's role in what was done to indigenous families in the 19th and 20th centuries. More than 150,000 children were taken from their families and forced to attend religious schools where many suffered abuse. ABC's Marcus Moore is in Edmonton. Tonight, Pope Francis arriving in Western Canada as he fulfills a long-standing desire that the pontiff apologize on Canadian soil for the church's role in the system to cut indigenous children from their heritage over the course of more than 100 years. It was part of the Canadian government's goal at the time to better assimilate indigenous children into Canadian society. In 2015, Canada's National Center for Truth and Reconciliation released a report finding children were punished for speaking their own languages, abused physically and sexually, calling it cultural genocide. A survivor said, the only thing I learned in the residential school was how to hate myself. 
Tony Alexis is chief of the Alexis Nakota Sioux Nation. He's among those who called for Pope Francis to come and apologize in person. The Pope issued an apology from the Vatican earlier this year, but many still called for him to go further and to do so on Canadian soil. It's a validation of what has happened with the church and how they've uh, hurt and abused our people. The Pope's visit comes only a year after the discovery of hundreds of unmarked burials on the grounds of former residential schools, most believed to be the graves of children. Yeah, he should be apologizing. Ooh, that makes me mad that it even happened. <laughs> Oh, but a lot of this was so long ago, some of you might be saying. It don't matter. They're still leading people astray with their polytheistic cult crap. We have seen. All those depictions you see of uh, Mother Mary holding baby Jesus and stuff, all that is is a depiction of old Babylonian Semiramis and Tammuz Nimrod cult sun worship crap. This, this cult's all over. It manifests all over the world in many different religions and languages. Check it out. Also, take a look at all the depictions of Jesus and the saints over the years with sun discs or halos behind their head. That's also Babylonian sun worship Nimrod crap. Plus, I, I don't even got to tell you guys about all the child abuse scandals and lawsuits and everything that's gone on for years. And then they don't allow priests to marry? What? That's not biblical one bit. Here, take a look at this. This is out of Leviticus. This is what the Bible was saying for the Levite priests for rules of them being married. Also, take a look at this. Take a look at all the depictions of Jesus doing the same hand signs as the devil and Baphomet and all of these other depictions of the devil. But what else do you expect from a place that hires the dang emperor from Star Wars to be the absolute head of the Catholic Church? Seriously, look at this guy. He is evil incarnate. Yeah, that's Pope Benedict. He was the Pope right before this current Pope. He is actually the only Pope to ever resign. I mean, talk about a guy with yeah. problems. His papacy was rife with controversy and abuse with kids and him allowing this abuse to go on. And he resigned. In fact, lightning even struck the Vatican. One of the other controversies plaguing his papacy besides the abuse of kids and allowing the abuse of kids was the fact that the Pope Benedict grew up as a one Joseph Ratzinger who was a prominent Nazi in Hitler's youth. Yeah. <laughs> 
he said that he was only pretending to be a Nazi and pretending to follow orders to save his own life. Well, if that was the case, then tell me, tell me this. How did he rise through the ranks to become the Grand Inquisitor? I don't know. You, you don't become one of the head guys, one of the main guys in charge of the Hitler Youth by keeping your head down and pretending to follow orders and just getting through it. Not if you listen, hell! I mean, come on. The Vatican didn't know that this guy was a freaking Nazi. No, no. <laughs> They are said to have such a good information system that they know on Friday what's going to happen Sunday. They have archives and miles of underground tunnels of secret and hidden history and information over thousands of years. But they couldn't figure out that Joseph Ratzinger was a Nazi. And also the Emperor on Star Wars. <laughs> but hey, what do you expect from a so-called Christian organization that keeps idols from other gods? And even paintings and depictions of Lucifer himself. So think what they have hidden in vaults and underground in the catacombs and things we don't know about if this is the kind of stuff that they leave in plain sight. I mean, come on, look at this stuff. Uh, look, look at this. This is the main reception hall called the Paul VI Audience Hall. That It's a main hall that the Pope uses. See that? It's a freaking giant snake. Look at it. It's a serpent and then take a look at this little scene inside the mouth where the Pope sits he's sitting there right in the mouth next to a super demonic looking sculpture called the resurrection That is not Jesus. That looks super satanic, right? And why wouldn't it be? Why not when they openly worship and venerate Lucifer at several Easter Masses and when they induct other popes into sainthood? What? Yes, yes, they do. And they didn't just do it once. They do this at all kinds of Easter Masses and when they induct popes into sainthood. There's, there's all kinds of footage of it all over and you can look up the captions for yourself. I have. It's all there. But I have some footage right here for you. Take a look. And like I said, it, it's going to have the captions because he sings it in Latin so you'll be able to see it all. Lucifer matutinus in veniat. Ive in quam Lucifer quin esit ocasum. Christus filius tu. <laughs> you see that crap? Singing to Lucifer, saying Christ is his son. I can't take it no more. You see, that Christ and God they worship is not the same Christ and God from Scripture that Jesus is and is talking about. You don't believe me? Here, watch some other blasphemous crap that they're saying. Watch this. In secula seculorum. Wow, right out in the open, right out there. And people are so deceived and devoid of God's word that they think that it's 
okay. Okay! They'll even argue and be like, well, Lucifer just means light bearer. Yeah, it does. And it says right in the scripture that Satan masquerades as an angel of light. The Bible says he's bad. That's why they, that's another reason they didn't want us to read it besides money because the Bible says that Lucifer's bad and that he only comes to kill, steal and destroy. And it says one day we're going to narrowly look at him and consider him and say is is this him? That that's the guy who shook the world. And that's the guy the Catholic Church worships and wants you to worship. Who exactly is Lucifer? Here's the short answer. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For well, thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the Lord. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Everything the devil says is a straight-up lie or a half-truth. He cannot tell the truth. So instead of always, you know, looking at all the lies, get in the word so you know what's the truth. Here, listen to these words of wisdom. Study the lie, they can make new lies up. Study the truth and you'll know when the lie comes. That's right. Get in your word. Don't be fooled by popes and angels of false light. You gotta be able to recognize him. If you can't recognize the devil unless he's showing you his horns, then you in trouble. You better recognize me like I look familiar. So, you know, you might be asking, well, who's their Christ then? How, who's their version of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit if they worship the devil? Here. Yeah, so they, that's how they work it out. And look at this. The Pope even approved this detestable idol of Moloch to be put up in Rome. And people used to sacrifice their kids to Moloch. It's a real bloody, gross history. Well, that's part one of the Catholic Church Exposed. Make sure you stay tuned for part two, where we're going to cover the different cults and rituals that they tried to turn into holidays, like Easter, Lent, Valentine's Day, and even Christmas. Okay! And make sure you guys help me get past 1,000 subscribers. You gotta help me! And by doing so, you're gonna make sure that you never miss any future content and that you'll make sure to get part two of this. So, all you gotta do is just hit that subscribe button along with that little bell icon. Also, take a smash on that like button. Thanks for watching, everybody. God bless. You have a great day. Study the lie, they can make new lies up. Study the truth and you'll know when the lie comes.